thanksgiving in our hearts with praise upon our lips for thou art the great God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who is the almighty redeemer of thine elect. We thank thee, Lord, for that grace that was given to us before times eternal in Christ Jesus. And we thank thee that that grace has been manifested in the appearing of our Lord who has by his appearing and by his uh, redemptive labors have brought uh, life and uh, immortality to light uh, through his gospel. And how wondrous that we are called to be the proclaimers of that good news to the nations. Equip us, we pray thee, for that calling. We commit to thee our labors together in this class in the study of the prophets of old. May thy blessing be upon us. Grant us of thy spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding and of power and of might, so that we shall apprehend that which has been revealed. May the name of the Lord Christ be exalted in our midst through our labors and in uh, all of the ministry yet uh, given to us to perform. Be with thy people this day to the ends of the earth. Hasten again the coming of our blessed Redeemer, we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. I hear they're having a, a foot of snow back in Massachusetts today. <laughs> it confirms my calling to be in California. <laughs> All right, let's uh, first straighten out the uh, schedule of classes. Uh, you uh, notice that in the uh, schedule arrangement there is a block there on Wednesday, uh, the uh, fourth hour of the morning, which uh, is open to uh, some overflow of both either Pentateuch or prophets. Actually, it will be Pentateuch won't use it, but uh, prophets will. And uh, as you know, I leave uh, about a week before the end of the semester, and uh, so by way of making up. Uh, for the classes that would be normally held that last week or so, we uh, do utilize this uh, additional block of material on, on a Wednesday at um, whatever time, 11.45. So this is the way it will work out now if you can uh, better jot this down. Uh, we, we meet Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and uh, we will in fact meet the two hours uh, there at 10.45 and 11.45 starting today and running right through uh, February and March, the first week in April, then comes the vacation week, and then for two weeks after vacation week, namely uh, uh, the weeks of uh, April 17th, uh, well, well, we're talking about Tuesday, so uh, April 17th and, uh, and April 24th, we will continue meeting the, the, the two scheduled hours, and that will be it as far as Tuesdays are concerned. So solidly through from today through uh, February, uh, excuse me, through April 24th, we'll meet the, the two hours on Tuesday and not thereafter. Now for the Wednesday uh, arrangement, that's uh, a, a little, that's a little more variety. Uh, this week we will meet just the, the one hour on Wednesday, the uh, 10.45 hour, but not the 11.45 hour. Then starting uh, next week, which would be then February 14, we'll be meeting two hours each Wednesday, running from February 14th through February through and through March. Uh, that is until March 28th. Uh, <coughs> there will be no classes uh, on Wednesday on April 4th. So you can all take off for vacation week early, see? Uh, so uh, through March, uh, then, except for this week, we will be meeting the two hours each Wednesday. April 4th, there will be no class, then there's vacation week, and then once again, after the vacation week on April 18th, we'll meet for two hours on Wednesday, and that will be it for the year. Okay, that adds up to the required uh, 39 hours that is assigned to to the course in, in, in profits. Any questions then about the schedule? The vacation is on the 17th. Uh, the vacation is on the 18th. 
the 18th of, 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 of April? Yeah. Yeah, two hours uh, on, on April 18th. The location is on that week. Are the location is in that week? No. So, no, it's, it's, every it's, 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 it's a week before. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not getting this part. Partly the old deaf professor problem, but it may be. What is the point that's being made? Oh, you're okay. Okay, we're in good shape. Yes. What about April 13th? Is that just the one hour? April 13th. Let's see. April. Um, that, now wait a minute. April 13th is not a Tuesday or a Wednesday. It's I don't think. Or, or it's vacation week. Yeah. It's vacation week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's right. Yeah. That's vacation week. Vacation is runs from April 9th through 13th. Any other clarifications or whatever? All right. Now, if someone can help me distribute these. So. And let's have the extras up, up here. Back. Be nice if you give me one. <laughs> <coughs> All right, what is being distributed is a, a reading a report and your recollections perhaps of the penitent class, so we'll tell you how we do this. You just hang on to these reading reports and as you complete the uh, several assignments, then, then you uh, indicate that. Don't wait until the, uh, the end of the term and, and then go back and fill in all of the uh, uh, dates that you, you think that you completed them. Uh, as you complete them, put the, the, the dates down. And part of this is calculated so that you will not postpone everything until the end of the term gets stuck. You know, I want you to be able to keep up at a nice natural pace with, uh, thank you, with the, the uh, reading. And uh, so let's uh, look down the uh, list. Some of it uh, is uh, from en English text, and some of it is a Hebrew translation, and that's uh, uh, another whole, I, I hope not too unhappy subject uh, in, in itself. But uh, uh, in uh, Pentateuch, you were assigned uh, the part of Voss's biblical theology that had to do with the uh, patriarchal period and the mosaic uh, and so on. But part two then deals with the prophetic revelation, and I assigned that then in, uh, in this course. Uh, also, uh, my book, Images of the Spirit, is one that we divide between the two courses, and uh, officially chapters one and two were assigned in Pentateuch, and uh, now officially three and four. I assume most of you are probably who had Pentateuch, at least have uh, already read uh, the, the, the entirety of, of uh, that. Uh, now, uh, the, the next item is uh, something which is uh, available online uh, at this point, and within, uh, I, I hope, a month, it will be available in uh, you know, a regular paperback. At, at, uh, our, our don't know what word to use. When, when you're distinguishing fr uh, from stuff that's available online, and you, uh, something is actually out there as a book, and then you, you say a hard copy, then everyone thinks it has a hard cover and over against a paperback. Yeah. And they'll have a, it's a hard copy, but with a paperback, all right? And, and, uh, and uh, the, the publisher hopes uh, that uh, that will be out uh, in, in about a month. Mean, meanwhile, it is available, and you can download the thing free. Uh, and you, you never have to buy the, the, the book if you want to go through the nuisance center of the downloading and then the binding and, and everything on your own. I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, probably not more expensive uh, and, and certainly uh, more convenient to get the book rather than to download and, and, and buy the stuff. But meanwhile, meanwhile, if you did want to get started reading any of it, uh, uh, you can get it at the website that's uh, given here in, in the, the reading list. Uh, uh, the story of that uh, 2 H Press uh, uh, site is uh, is uh, an interesting one, and, and, and to me, it's uh, just a, an incredible provision of the Lord in my old age for getting my, my stuff uh, published. But there is a a group of uh, good folk in uh, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Kansas City uh, who, through the, the, the years, uh, 
Well, it, it's a remarkable congregation because uh, you think Kingdom Prologue is tough going. They distribute it to the people in the pews, and then and, 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 and that's, that's devotional. <laughs> This is not your average uh, congregation, and uh, somehow they, they got the, the strange notion that Klein stuff should be published more globally, and so they have undertaken that they actually set up this this publishing house to do that, at least as its uh, uh, central uh, uh, objective. And uh, so the, the, they hope sooner or later to have available uh, online uh, anything and everything I guess I've ever written, uh, it, it, the, it's, what takes the time is that to go back and edit that stuff, though, for, for me to get it in, in, in shape for this. But meanwhile, they, they're ready to do everything, to, to do the typing and, and, and uh, the publishing and the binding and, and, and the marketing and, uh, and everything. Just an incredible labor of love on the part of these uh, dear folk uh, here who have uh, undertaken to, to do this. And uh, so up to this point, you, you probably are aware they have already turned out Kingdom Prologue in a new, um, smaller f format, and uh, th th that's out there. And uh, now this one, Glory in Our Midst, is the uh, series uh, of articles that I wrote over a period of about 10 years, starting back in uh, 1990, I think it was, for, for K. Rix uh, uh, on uh, the uh, night visions of Zachariah. And, um, so what, of course, I was attempting to do there was, was to uh, employ the biblical theological uh, her hermeneutic and, and the way of doing exegesis in that way. And that's why I'm assigning the book in, in this uh, course as an example of, of uh, uh, how, as I see it, the exegesis uh, uh, ought to be done. Now, in, in effect, what goes on in class has that same purpose, to, to, to engage in exegesis uh, so that by osmosis or something that the students uh, uh, absorb the, uh, the, the method, but uh, supplementing that uh, now here is a, 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 a book covering uh, a, a, an interesting in itself uh, section of the prophetic uh, revelation, but uh, uh, the assignment then is to, to read that in whatever form is, uh, is, is available uh, to you. And uh, if it would come out in a month, uh, well, that, that would give you plenty of uh, time, but it, it, just in case uh, it's a, a longer delayed, it is good to have it available on, online. So that's uh, that assignment. Um, now for an introduction, we, we do not spend much time on that dimension of, of, of biblical studies uh, here. We didn't in Pentateuch and uh, we don't in, in, uh, in Prophets, uh, but at least that, that there should be some reading on your part in this area. We do make an assignment in a standard Old Testament introduction. So for years I have been using Harrison's introduction. For a year or so it seemed to be out of print, but it seems that now nothing is out of print, everything is available somehow or other, and, and anyone can tell me uh, current knowledge whether uh, Harrison is available? You can get a CBD for 15 huh? You can get on CBD for about $15. 16 Somewhere in there, that's, that's not bad. But it is available then? Okay, well, th that was my understanding, and uh, uh, all right. Uh, now, in, in the case that it should not uh, have been available, as you can see from your reading report, I have uh, indicated the alternative, which I, for, for one year or, or so past, I, I have signed in the, uh, signed in the absence of, of Harrison, namely the Dillard Longman introduction to the Old Testament. Uh, so uh, if Harrison is, is available, you can get it, uh, do that. Uh, the, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, there any questions about uh, this? There's no reading reports as such as you know. It's just a matter of handing in this form, which is in your hands, with, with uh, the uh, right answer to each of these questions, which is yes, I have completed it on these uh, dates. <laughs> and, uh, and you'll do that in connection with the, the, you'll submit that in connection with the final exam. Any questions on, uh, on uh, this? Now we come to the, uh, the, the Hebrew translation and uh, the passages you see cited then you are to, uh, to work at carefully in, in, in the Hebrew and uh, there will in fact at a point I'll indicate presently as a matter of fact it's going to be on March uh, 7th, March 7th 
there will be a, a, a one hour exam based on the Hebrew in which you will be asked to do translation and the parsing of verbs uh, from selected passages uh, uh, listed here. And uh, now, now here's the most terrifying news maybe that you'll uh, hear today or this semester. Uh, but you must be able to pass that exam to get credit for this course. And uh, if, if you can't handle Hebrew, you are, are not qualified to, to do the work of this course. And uh, you really aren't uh, uh, justified in getting a, a degree from a seminary that boasts of, uh, of basing its education on the original languages. And uh, there is, uh, there's a danger of, of uh, standards being set in, in catalogs and, and ignored in practice. <laughs> And uh, well, I've been around teaching now for 52 or 53 years, and, and when I began, we didn't ignore those things. We upheld the standards. I lament the, the, uh, the, the uh, drift in, in education in, in, in general downward uh, through the years, and it's uh, especially grievous in a Christian institution uh, to uh, let that happen. And uh, so I do my part, uh, unhappy though that may be for my students, uh, to, to maintain the, the standards, to honor the standards that are officially on our, on our books. Uh, you are to be uh, trained uh, to be ministers of the word and uh, competent to, uh, to handle the original languages and, uh, and uh, that's prerequisite for the, the course. You haven't done the work of this course if you can do that, so the, there's the unhappy story. Uh, and uh, so you, you must be able to pass that Hebrew test uh, to get credit for the, the, this course period. All right, you may not like it, but that's, that's uh, the way this one's uh, uh, going to be conducted. Yes? Is there legal to be done by that March 7th? That's correct. Right? And uh, that it's not just a one month well, the course for everything, you know. <laughs> I don't see how they squeeze these courses into one month and then do term papers and everything and so on. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's so March, uh, what did I say, March 7th? There will be a one-hour exam. That, that, as I indicated to previously, we will actually meet for two hours on, on uh, that particular Wednesday, but one of them will be devoted to the Hebrew. I suppose it will be the first hour so that uh, you, <laughs> otherwise there would be no one here the first hour for the lecture. <laughs> now, um, the whole thing, obviously, then, then you want to get on top of by that date. Meanwhile, uh, we will be coming in, I think, pretty much in the sequence listed here to these passages, and, and so it would be highly desirable that uh, you will have uh, worked on these passages before they come up in class. And uh, the, uh, Lord willing, today we'll still get to that first one, Deuteronomy 18, which you haven't had a chance to, to look at, of course, but apart from today, uh, try to be anticipating where we are in, along the way in and have the, the uh, Hebrew in, in hand by that uh, uh, point. <coughs> now then, uh, so much for the reading. Any question uh, about either the English or the Hebrew uh, uh, part of that? Now, as I just mentioned, there a term paper, yes. Um, will we be turning in our translation of the Hebrew? No, 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 no. You, there, there's no, uh, you know, paperwork of that sort that you have to hand. You just do the translating and, and do the parsing and be, be able to to, to 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 do it in, in, in the exam. But no, there's nothing to be handed in. Other points. Term paper next. Time. The, the term paper. It's an exegesis paper, and it um, will actually be due uh, on a, a April uh, a April 4th. Now, uh, if you look back at the schedule of when we were going to meet, you'd find that there, there's a zero there. We, we, we actually don't meet in class that day. Uh, but your papers will, will uh, be due in... Uh, or you submit papers to my mailbox or to the uh, secretary or whatever. Um, and as the time approaches, and maybe I'll set a, a 
a certain hour of the day by which, uh, like noon or so, by which uh, uh, they will be due. But the due date is uh, April 4th. Now, it's an exegesis paper, he, a Hebrew exegesis paper. Underline Hebrew four or five times. It's a Hebrew exegesis paper. It's, it's not an English uh, uh, text exegesis. And that means then that uh, you will begin with producing your, your, your own translation uh, of, the, uh, of the passage you select. And to do the translation, you will have had to deal with with questions of variations in the, in the text that there might uh, be. There won't be that many in any of the passages uh, here that you're, you know, are given as options, but there will be some, and uh, so you must in, engage in, in an examination of the, the, of the uh, merits and demerits of the various uh, readings that are available and, and indicate why you've come down in favor of the one you have, which will then determine your translation and so on. But that's where you, you begin. And I, uh, there are so many papers then that, that don't begin with that, and I'm always uh, uh, indicating that. And, uh, start right up front. That's the first thing's going to be on, on, on your paper, is your translation, together with, right there, the text critical uh, 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 studies. Now. Text criticism is not the same as word studies. Uh, a lot of students at this point will throw in just general words. There's no problem about the text, the words in the text. The, 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 they engage in, in the meaning of, of the words. So now, the meaning of the words, that belongs in the commentary part. Uh, the, the text critical comments just have to do with the variations in, in the, the, the Hebrew manuscripts and the versions and, and so on that uh, require attention. So that's the first thing you do. Now the passages, why don't I, uh, these are going to be the three from among which uh, you uh, may, may choose. Uh, first is uh, Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, verses 18 through 21. Next is uh, Amos 9, verses 8 through 12. And uh, the third and last is uh, Zechariah 13, verses 7 through 9. Isaiah 66, 18 through 21. Uh, Amos 9, verses 8 through 12. Zechariah 13. Seven uh, through uh, nine. All right. So it, it's uh, an exegesis uh, paper, and uh, therefore, uh, and <coughs> excuse me, with about a ten-page limit. About ten-page limit. <coughs> but it, it should be about ten pages, not five. <laughs> and. Uh, but uh, I keep, uh, on the other hand, I don't want uh, the 13, 14, 15. I want uh, uh, 10. And uh, so you, you've got to condense or whatever to, to get it within uh, that. But uh, that, that's uh, your limit. Now, with that being the limit, uh, you wouldn't really have... Uh, much uh, space to be giving to the introductory questions. I don't want you to discuss the the, the authorship of Isaiah, the unity of all 66 chapters. <laughs> you know, the, the, that's not what it's called for. You know, or uh, in any of the other uh, cases, it's uh, not a general introduction to the, the authorship of the, the book in, in uh, question. Uh, you might want the, the, just the, the, the briefest of indications of, of, of your conclusions as to who, who wrote the book or something of that sort. Uh, and um, conceivably, in, in, in an introductory paragraph or two, you might like to engage in, in a structural study of the passage. Now, that would be moving into the, the, the line of exegesis, and so that would be perfectly appropriate if you examine the, the, the overall passage, you see certain uh, uh, literary uh, design and artistry, chiastic features, this, that, and the other thing, uh, and, and uh, you can see how that, that gives insight into the total meaning of, of the passage. So that, that, that's a helpful thing uh, uh, to provide by way of introduction. But very quickly then, you are moving on to the verse by verse exegesis of the Hebrew text, the study of the meaning of the Hebrew words, the, the grammatical problems that arise in, in, in the Hebrew and, and, and so on. And, uh, and so you'll be producing this verse-by-verse -verse commentary. Now also uh, another in basic dimension of, 
of, of the study uh, is um, to bring out the biblical theological aspect of, of uh, the, the thing, the, the fundamental hermeneutical uh, questions. In all of these passages, you know, you're going to be running into the customary uh, inescapable problem of literalism and, and what I call prophetic idiom, uh, the, the, the nature of the, the material, or, or more precisely, the, the, the typological problem, okay? The typological, eschatological aspect of it. Where does this fit into the whole scheme? Uh, uh, the episode uh, narrated, or prophesied, and the passages select. Where does that fit in? Does this have to do with the first advent? Does it have to do with the second advent? Does, is it something that has to do with with the Old Testament Israel uh, and, and its fall? Or is it something that has to do with the developments within the, the church age or the, the final judgment? That, that whole question of where this fits into the eschatology, what this passage contributes uh, to our understanding of biblical theology, that is a, a central and, and major concern that uh, you, you should have and, 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 and uh, deal with. Okay. Uh, let's see, I think uh, that covered the points I, I wanted to. So, you know, the, the whole millennial uh, question can come up in, in, in these uh, passages, and uh, so this gets you into the heart of, uh, of uh, things here in prophetic studies. So uh, now any questions about that assignment? Uh, if you um, should happen to pick the, the, the Zechariah one, um, I mentioned then our, you know, the Glory in Our Midst volume that's coming out, and an, an, an appendix at the back of that uh, is a republishing of, of an article that I wrote some years back in Journal Evangelical Theological Society called uh, the, the Structure of the Book of Zechariah. So that appendix, that article, if you consult the original article either way, uh, you, you might find uh, helpful in, in, in getting some general orientation to what's going on in the Book of Zechariah. Any questions on that? Question. Yes, please. You did say that you do want a verse by verse commentary. Yeah, that, that, that is the, that's the heart of the, the, the okay. whole thing, is this verse by verse commentary, with your comments being geared to bring out these uh, emphases and issues. Okay. Now, there's one other item that uh, requires special attention as an assignment. We are not able to, you know, deal with with much more than selected passages here and there in the prophets. One thing that uh, we have not traditionally uh, dealt with in this class is that that whole climactic, Isianic uh, material of the Eved Yahweh, the servant of the Lord. And uh, yet, uh, I want you to have uh, exposure uh, to that. And uh, so each year, uh, what I've done is to uh, have an assignment whereby, and there are a couple of major things that have been written that give you the the, the whole, all the data you need, uh, to study the, the history of the exegesis of that servant of the Lord in, in the Isaiah servant uh, passages, whether you call them songs or whatever. Um, and... Uh, let me mention the, the volumes that I usually give that uh, you will, will study, and uh, and this will come up as a matter of fact as one question uh, that you know beforehand on the midterm. I haven't mentioned the midterm. I did mention the, the Hebrew exam on, on March 7th, and then the following week on March 14th there will be the midterm, which will be a two-hour exam. And that midterm exam will, will cover the lecture material, what's gone in, on in class, <clears throat> pretty much up to that point. Um, not altogether. I have a cutoff for the exam requirement, usually about a, what's gone on, and the lectures may be about a week before the exam, but we'll specify that later. But 
basically it will be an exam that on, on the lectures, the first half of the course, but in, with, in addition, you will uh, know beforehand that one of the questions uh, will be on this subject of the servant of the Lord. And it will simply be something to this effect, uh, to, to survey the history of the interpretation of, of uh, the servant of uh, the Lord from you know, early Jewish interpretations on through the various stages of uh, of modern criticism and, and so on. Now, there, there's all kinds of, of detail of in names and, and, and dates and so on here, and, and I'm amazed that uh, year after year at uh, how much of this is, is given in this detail in, in, uh, in, in this question. But I, I actually, you know, uh, what you want is the, 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 the key contributors, the ones who have, have uh, contributed to the critical turning point <coughs> turning points in, in, in the history of the exegesis and, and so on. Uh, and get that basic broad uh, uh, outline of things. But the, the, the books in which then you'll find the information, one is H.H. H. Rowley, H.H. H. Rowley, R-O-W-L-E-Y. And uh, it's a collection of essays, and the whole collection actually takes its name from the, the, uh, the uh, one that you'll be interested in, uh, which is the, the Servant of the Lord. The servant of the Lord. The other one, which is a more detailed uh, uh, one, is uh, C. R. North, C. R. North, and he called his work "The Suffering Servant in Deutero Isaiah." The Suffering Servant in Deutero Isaiah. And then on the more positive side, not giving so much the whole detailed history of, of the interpretation of the servant of the Lord, but in a positive exposition of the thing in, in a very fine way uh, by someone who was a former student of mine maybe 30 years or so ago. And um, then he uh, was a, has been uh, Professor of Old Testament uh, uh, at Gordon Conwell, where he, after they made me when I was 70 years old, retire. Uh, th then uh, this fellow Gordon Hugenberger uh, was as assigned, uh, my course, the equivalent of Pentateuch here. And uh, to use an unhappy expression, he's a Kleinian. Uh, so I was glad that, that uh, there's someone that was in agreement to, with my approach. Uh, who was teaching the, the material, but then he became the, the, the pastor. Those of you who know the Boston area know, know the, the historic Park Street Church, uh, downtown Boston, very influential in, in the, the whole college campus environment of the Boston Cambridge area, very strategic position. And uh, so he, he's the pastor there, and, and uh, that made him drop the bulk of his teaching at the, 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 the the uh, seminary, but he still uh, does some. But uh, uh, he has uh, written a, a, an article that I think you'll all enjoy. Uh, it's chapter six in, in a book which is called uh, The uh, Lord's Anointed. The Lord's Anointed is the uh, title of the book. And, uh, and Gordon Hugenberger, his name is spelt H-U-G-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E Gordon Hugenberger, H-U-G-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E uh, the, the title of his chapter is uh, Servant of the Lord in the Servant Songs of Isaiah. And then colon, a second Moses figure, a second Moses figure. So that's the, the title of that chapter. Uh, it will be available for you to uh, make copies of over in the library. I, I, I think they already have from last year a, a text that you can use uh, to make your own copies. If they haven't, I'll give them a new, uh, new one to, to use for that purpose, but uh, you will be able to get that this way. And by the way, I think uh, the same is true of the articles by both North and, uh, and, uh, and what's his name, Rowley. 
they will be available there so, uh, because other, otherwise it would be difficult for all of you to be getting access to just one copy or so and I don't know if many of you would have access to other libraries where you could get those but they, they should all be uh, available and uh, I'll have to ch check how many copies or whether they are just available in, in a, a couple of photocopy thing on, on the reserve shelf, you know. I don't know, but I wanted to ask the first two items, are they books or articles? Books. Yeah. 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 Although the, the one is a, mm -hmm. as I recall, is, is a book of a collection of essays of which the ones dealing with the servant of the Lord are, you know, just maybe two or three chapters in the book. Other questions? All right. So then there is that assignment, and uh, you can know beforehand that will be one of the questions on the midterm, which uh, should be, I think, helpful. You, it usually is. Everyone knocks that one off real good, and that uh, helps, uh, helps their grade. <clears throat> All right. I think I've covered those. Does anyone have any points? Now, we uh, are engaged then in this course in a um, study, obviously, of, of, of prophecy, but more especially of the prophets. Uh, and uh, the prophet, the Israelite prophet, understood as uh, a, a particular office. And as I say, now that's that's a narrower subject than the, the, the broad subject of, uh, of prophecy, which could take us back to the Garden of Eden and uh, through the patriarchal uh, period and, and, and so on, and deal with a broader phenomenon than, than just that of the, uh, the office of the prophet, but it's the latter that on which we will uh, be focusing. Oh, for example, one section of the course will be dealing with messianic prophecies in the Pentateuch, and uh, there, obviously, we will be dealing with material that, that predates the rise of the Israelite prophet. Uh, so in some things that we do in the course will be a, a little broader in character, but the, uh, the, the heart of the thing will be dealing with, with uh, the occupants of a, a particular office, as much an office as the office of the king or the office of the priest, uh, there was uh, the, the office of the, the, the prophet in Israel. And the first the thing that we do then is to, to uh, examine that concept, that office, and, uh, and what was re required, uh, required the, what, what prerequisites were there uh, for, for the office, the, the, the calling, the equipping, and, and so on, uh, what I call in the forming of the prophet. So we deal first then with the, the forming of the prophet, the whole divine approach and equipping of, of the, the elect individuals to perform this ministry. And then the, the second thing we're interested in is the functioning. So the forming and the functioning of the prophets, that's something we'll be dealing with here for several uh, weeks. And uh, we will, as we discuss the, the functioning of the, the prophet, uh, be uh, getting very much then into the particular uh, mission and message of, of the prophets in, in dealing uh, with Israel, Israel, God's covenant people, uh, God's people who are in, involved in the Abrahamic covenant, who are involved in the Mosaic covenant, and, and uh, the, that whole covenantal context of the thing turns out to be the the, the critical matter that one is engaged with all the time and studying the, 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 who the prophets are, what they, they are up to, and, and, uh, and the message in, uh, in uh, their, their writings. And uh, so the, the, we will be dealing with that in a general way. And then having determined what we see as the, as the mission of the prophets in terms of, of as we'll be calling it, conducting uh, conducting the lawsuit of the Mosaic Covenant against Israel on the one hand, but also on the other hand, 
uh, holding out the promises of the Abrahamic covenant and in doing so becoming heralds of the new covenant, that that dual function of the, of the prophets uh, that uh, leads uh, to the, the dual message of the fall of Israel and the fullness of Israel. There's the, this whole course in a nutshell, I think, uh, and it, is, it comes down to the study of that matter of that. That, that double prospect, that apparently paradoxical prospect of the fall of Israel and the fullness of Israel, which the, the prophets are predicting in terms of uh, their relationship to the one or the other of these covenants, the covenant of promise or the covenant of, of works. But uh, the, that, that will be where we uh, find our, ourselves thinking and struggling in our analysis of the, the functioning of the prophets. And having then done that in a general way, uh, then we will look at selected passages in Isaiah and Hosea, uh, starting with the 8th century prophets there, one in the north and one in the south, uh, to, uh, to see then how, how this actually works out in specific passages uh, uh, within these uh, prophets. And from there on, uh, uh, then uh, the uh, course toward the... the well, maybe the last third of the course uh, changes pace and instead of dealing with the, 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 these particular issues uh, just as such we get more into the pattern of eschatology mm. uh, that is something then that you're all I'm sure have been thinking about before you get out in, in the ministry there are issues that, that you do want to have fairly well settled in your mind the whole millennium question that's, that's a, a focus of it uh, but with that in view then, as I say, uh, with about a third of the course to go, we, we, uh, we turn to the books of Daniel and Ezekiel and, and do a lot with them. And uh, as time might allow, we're working in a, uh, something of, a, of an overview of, of moving out in, into the, the, the regions of, of the New Testament people here. You know, we might hear, we venture some sort of uh, overview of the New Testament book of Revelation. Uh, uh, and in any case in dealing uh, let's say with the book of Daniel uh, the, 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 the image of the beast or what, what have you you inevitably find yourself in the, the, the book of uh, Revelation in any case to some extent uh, but um, uh, we, we might have time to pay attention to the book of Revelation just on its own uh, the whole theme of of Armageddon I emphasize the, the concept uh, of the battle of Armageddon uh, that's the an area then where I have recently written in an article called Armageddon, the end of the millennium, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to ex expand that fundamental thesis of, of the concept of Armageddon uh, to make it the, sort of the, the, the storyline for a, a survey of, of uh, God's dealings with man from from the beginning to the, the consummation and uh, in, in, a, in a book that uh, I have tentatively in, in mind entitling uh, uh, God, Heaven, and Armageddon where I would use the, the, the concept of the mountain of God for the presence of, of the, the glory of God uh, the mountain of God which is our Armageddon uh, you know, from, from Eden uh, to, to the uh, new heaven and new earth uh, but uh, to trace that theme throughout Scripture and showing how it too is embedded in the succession of covenants. As a matter of fact, uh, what I'm up to here is just trying to uh, present, if it's uh, within me to do anything popular, uh, to, to try to present the, the whole scheme of, uh, of the covenants uh, in, in this sugar-coated form. Everyone's interested in Armageddon. Well, you got them interested in Armageddon, maybe you can then, then, then feed them the, the whole structure of the covenants along the way that's the mischief at least that I have in my uh, doing in, in uh, the next book and so there will be uh, you know em emphasis on that toward the end of the course all right but we start now with with the, the thesis uh, let me see how my hour is going here we, we go from uh, uh, order of 11 to, um, to we should take a break somewhere along uh, the line I suppose now it's a little early to take the break, but this is a better breaking point than it would be in 10 or 15 minutes. So let, let's uh, take five minutes break here. And let, let's keep it down to five. <laughs>